So set the icon of button start to, if you remember, 6001 is the image that says start. So we want it to always say start. Um, I've realized we've just forgotten to add a label to our interface. So let's add that now. And what we want to do is let's um, call this score. And we'll set the formatting of the text. We'll make it nice and big, make it bold, left justified. And finally, let's set its color to something a bit more suitable, white. And in its contents, I'm just going to stick a random number. So we'll put 07 or something for now. OK. The other thing that we then want to do when we're resetting our game is we want to set the score back to 0, um, which in this case is put 0 into field score. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to track when the game has started and stopped. So we'll do that with a local variable, and the script local means it can be accessed by any of these functions, and we'll call it s for script local playing, so the game is playing. And we want to put false into playing. So that tells any of our other functions, should we choose to check that variable, whether or not the game is playing or not. And so that there is our game reset function. Now, what we want to do is um, implement start stop. So, in order to tell if a game is started or stopped, we could use this s playing variable. But an easy way of doing it in this particular case of starting and stopping the game is actually checking the icon of the button. So, if, if the icon is set to 6001, which is start, we know the game isn't playing. So, if the icon of button start is 6001, then else and if. I'm just going to put a little comment in here just to help us as we see this. Um, game stopped. Game started. Okay, so what do we need to do when the game is stopped, well, we need to start the game. So we need to level generate. Call that function here, that handler that starts, builds us a new level. We also need to set this button to say reset. Set the icon of button start to 6002. And we need to put true into this variable that tells us whether or not the game is playing. Put you into S playing. Okay. So that's if the game has is, is going to start. Now, if the game is running, what do we need to do? Well, we need to put false into S playing, so it's no longer playing. We need to set the icon back to the start button. Notice there I didn't have the braces in. We probably don't need those either. Okay. And finally, we want to reset the game. So we'll just go game reset. Okay, so let's. And in order to test it, we need to add this game start stop to the button script. So it's the only piece of coding we'll do outside of the card script, but that just lets us start and stop the game. So let's start. Okay, we've got a little bug there. That should be it. So there we go, start, reset, and you can see that our, um, our score has reset to zero. Now what do we do on level generate? So in level generate, first of all, we want to clear 
the deck, if you like. We want to make sure that all of these buttons don't have any icon so that the level is blank. Repeat with x equals 1 to 9. And then set the icon of button target ampersand x to 0. So let's just try that. So you can see it clears it, resets it, clears it, resets it. And the last thing we want to do within level generate is we want to pick one of these buttons um, or two of these buttons to show the targets so that the user can press them. So first of all, let's decide whether or not we're going to generate one or two. So put um, random two into t count. So that's going to say, pick me a random number between one and two, and give that into count, and then we're going to we're going to repeat the following step, t count times. And in here we're going to generate a random um, square to a random target to show. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate two random targets. So this time, we'll set the icon of button target ampersand and this time we're going to put random 9 so from 1 to 9 to 6000 so you'll see that we'll do this up to two times and then we'll randomly pick a target to show let's just see how that works and there we go let's reset run it again Nice. So we're getting sometimes just one target, sometimes two targets. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is add in the ability um, to touch and destroy these targets. So first of all, let's um, make sure the game is playing. If S playing is true, then end if. So first of all, if the game is running, do this. Secondly, we need to make sure that we're touching an actual target as opposed to another item on the screen. So if the short name of the target contains target, so we know these are all called target plus a number. So we're just going to ask if the short name, which gives us the name of the, of the button, contains target, then we're good to go. So this will only get to this point here if one, the game is playing, and if two, they've touched one of the targets. Now we want to check to see whether or not the button they've put their finger against is an actual target. And we can do that because we know that it will have an icon of 6,000. If the icon of the target is 6,000, then we know that they've hit, successfully hit, a visible target. So the first thing to do is to increment the score. So put field score plus one into field score. So that's just incremented that. Now we want to hide the target. Set the icon of the target to zero, so we've hidden the target they've shot. <laughs> now, what we want to do is we want to generate the next level, but only if they've destroyed all the targets on the screen. So we need to check if there are any targets left. So we do if um, target count is zero, then. Okay? And we'll implement target count in a second, but what do we want to do if there are no targets left? 